We're at AND DevCon 2014 here in San Francisco, and I'm sitting with Bear Douglas, developer advocate at Twitter. How are you doing, Bear? I'm doing great. How are you, Doug? Doing very good. So tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and uh, what you're passionate about. Sure. So I'm a developer advocate at Twitter, and what developer advocates do is we create all of the developer content that makes it simple for people who are interested in adding Twitter inside their app to do it. So that's everything from tutorials and screencasts like you guys are making, um, to documentation, to sample code, and making sure that people have everything they need to get started quickly and easily. So I'm particularly passionate about Android, and so that's why we're here today at AND DevCon. We recently released a set of modular SDKs we call Fabric, which makes it really simple to add crash reporting, beta distribution, analytics, Twitter integration, and if you're interested, adding ads to your app, we have a great uh, ad exchange platform built inside Fabric as well. Oh, excellent. So this actually got a lot of buzz last night, a really surprising buzz. We had a developer panel of uh, experts from all over the industry, some people working at Square, Eventbrite, et cetera. And we were asking them really what platform they're starting to add to their applications and libraries, and a number of people really mentioned Twitter Fabric. So can you tell us a little bit more about what it means to be using Twitter Fabric and what's involved and what value it will add to customers? And first of all, does it cost any money? So it doesn't. And one of the greatest things about Fabric is that it's designed to fit your needs and give you as much functionality or as little as you want, depending on what you need for your app. So for a big app, uh, if you're growing into markets where you're maybe less familiar with the kinds of devices that people will have or their network connections, fragmentation is a huge problem and you can only test so much from inside your office with the devices you have. Somebody who's testing, on, who's using your app on a gingerbread phone coming from India is going to have a very different experience than you will sitting in your office using a Nexus 5. So for people like that, Crashlytics is a fantastic tool for monitoring how your app is performing across many devices, across many platforms, in different geographies. You shouldn't not release an app for fear that it's going to crash. We want to give you the, the confidence that your app is performing well in the market so you can see how things are doing and fix crashes for people who are experiencing them without needing to hold yourself back thinking, well, we're not sure this is going to work, so maybe we should hold back. Okay, so if I'm a developer and I've got an app and I want to add Crashlytics, is it just like a matter of including a jar file and a few items in my Android manifest? More or less. So we have a really cool onboarding plugin that works right in your IDE. So we have one for Android Studio and for IntelliJ and also for Eclipse. So you can download it and it actually is just a matter of a few clicks. The plugin makes all the changes you need to to your manifest, your Gradle file, adds the imports, and you just need to build and Crashlytics and Fabric are already inside your app. Oh, now what kind of data am I going to start getting if I add Crashlytics to my app? You'll get information on the particular file name and line that caused a crash inside the app. You'll get the trace for it. You'll even get stats on the device, like uh, the orientation of the phone at the time that it crashed, how much battery it had, um, what the network conditions were like. There's, there's a good amount of reporting you get in there. And we also make it simple for you to add breadcrumbs for yourself. So if you know, for example, that making it to level five in your game is often problematic for users, you can just log information to Crashlytics alongside the report, and when it gets sent up, you'll be able to drill down into each individual issue and see, well, this user first killed the troll, and then when they picked up the sword, that was when they hit the crash. So you can, you can figure out custom, custom events that you might want to track to make sure that you're getting to the root of the problem. Ooh, excellent. And now, does this add any kind of invasive permissions? Like, do I end up having to grant log access or, or really powerful, dangerous permissions about my device? Network state, really, and, and internet access are important. That's about it. That's it? Yeah. Wow. And uh, now, so this is Crashlytics. What are the other pieces of the uh, Twitter Fabric platform? Well, there's Twitter itself. So we make it easy for you to sign in with Twitter, make calls to, to Twitter's API, and also embed tweets inside your app. So for example, if you're, if you're a news app and you want to have conversation that's happening around a particular story you're reporting. It's super simple to add in a, an individual tweet or a stream of tweets, depending on your needs. Um, and you can also customize them in color and in font so that they look and feel like the rest of your app. Um, and alongside all the Twitter functionality, we also have a new product called Digits that makes it simple to do phone number sign-in for your app. So if you're expanding to markets where you expect that people might not have an email address to sign in with, 
or if you just know that people prefer to sign into your app with their phone or there's a great reason to have their phone number, we make it super easy. Digits is live in 216 countries and it's localized to 28 languages. So if you want to be reaching everybody on the planet, Digits is a great sign-in option for you. Ooh, excellent. So this is like really valuable, say, in third world countries or uh, Asia and... And even here in the States, a lot of teenagers, for example, the, if you think about uh, apps like Snapchat, they have phone number sign-in because it's, it's immediate and it's how people identify who they are online. It's all based through the phone. It's not just in, in global markets, though, that is very important. It's here in the US as well. Now, uh, how does Twitter Fabric really help me when I start going global? So let's say I am Twitter or a company and I've got an application and I want to, I've got users that are running on different devices in different countries. And what does Twitter Fabric add for me that can really make my life easier? Well, a couple of things. There is phone number sign-in with digits, which will expand your reach everywhere. You don't have to go through and make those carrier relationships. We take care of making sure that your SMSs get delivered when you're doing phone verification, so that's taken care of. Um, and then, like you said, when devices are fragmented and you're trying to uh, keep track of how different people all around the world are coming to your app, then Crashlytics can give you amazing amounts of insight into the types of devices people are using when they're signing into your app, uh, the kinds of crashes that they're encountering, and you can make notes for yourself where in the world they're happening. So if there is a pattern geographically, you can, you can try and track those well. Excellent. And uh, how do you guys make your money then? So if this is free, where does Twitter making its money? Well, for Twitter, it's important that people start thinking of us as a platform company. We really are here to support developers from the ground up. And so we help you when you're first building your app with Crashlytics. Then as you want to get growth, you can add Twitter, whether it's through sign-in or just through showing tweets. And that, of course, is important for us as a company. And then once you're ready to monetize, if you're interested in putting ads inside your app, we have a powerful exchange called Mopub that aggregates uh, ad stock from around multiple networks and make sure that you, the developer, get the best price for ad space inside your app. So we call Fabric free and free plus. So Crashlytics is free, Twitter integration is free, Mopub is free plus because you, it's free to use and you may actually make money off your app. So that's, that's our model. Very cool. And now looking beyond, where do you see the Android platform going and really the good growth opportunities? Out there. The great growth opportunities are, of course, global. It's very exciting to see wearables taking off, but I think really the main thing that's going to make a huge difference for developers is getting better traction with uh, later and later versions of the API so people can build really awesome apps against all the great stuff that Google has given us in later versions of Android so that people around the world can have awesome experiences on their phone. So that's incrementally improving device quality, it's, it's making sure that people have the latest and greatest Android, and then it's doing things like really working to make sure that your app operates under poor network conditions, under, um, you know, if a phone that has limited memory. As developers, the onus is on us too to make sure that our app works and works for everyone. So the exciting thing about the Android ecosystem is how accessible it is, and it's on us to make sure that it truly is accessible by building our apps against that. Oh, very cool. Now, for those in our audience who are out there and saying, okay, I'm looking for new opportunities in the Android space, is Twitter hiring right now? We are. We are. We're hiring in, uh, I know for sure, New York, Boston, and here in San Francisco. Um, we're looking for Android engineers for Fabric, for sure, for Vine, and for Twitter itself, the Android products. So what's the, the profile of a, a, a candidate? That's a great question. Um, I think different positions are, are looking for different levels of seniority. If you're coming fresh out of college, but you have a couple of Android projects under your belt, I think we would definitely be interested in talking to you. Um, and there are openings really all the way up through senior and staff positions. So we're interested in talking to you if you've got some Android background. Fair enough. Now tell us a little bit more about what you do and how somebody might actually get into being a developer advocate. Absolutely. And we are looking on my team too. So uh, what I do is I work closely with the product teams and also with the marketing teams to make sure that we have a pulse on understanding what our developers need from us. So that's everything from teaching them how to use our product and then listening to how they would prefer it to work if they don't, if they don't like how it does work, what's going wrong for them, what they need for their setups. Just like when you build an app for an audience that might be global, you don't know what kind of phones they're using. 
In the same way, when you write a framework, you have some idea of how you can best serve your community, but you can't possibly know everyone's different setup and how they're, how they're building, how they're operating as a team. So we listen and make sure that we are getting a good pulse on everybody's needs and taking that feedback back to product so we can adjust as needed. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm really glad you could come and join us here. Yeah, thanks. Enjoy the conference. Thank you.